Hey guys, this is Joe. I am the Digital Astronomer. Thank you for tuning back into my channel. Today we are going to do another project with the Dwarf Labs Dwarf 2. I've been amazed by this little mini smart telescope. It's super easy to use. And tonight I'm going to show you how to image your first DSO, your first deep space object, the Andromeda Galaxy. It's a very easy target. We're going to walk through the entire process from setup all the way through getting a picture that you can share on Facebook or impress your friends with. Stick around. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so the very first thing that you've got to think of as you're getting ready to set up an image with your Dwarf 2 is what am I going to take a picture of? Now, inside of the app, there are a number of objects that are in the night sky that you can just press the button and it will calibrate, go over, and find that object. The problem is that list isn't very long, and there are objects in the night sky that you might want to image. So tonight, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make it very simple, and I'm going, to, I'm going to show you how to image the Andromeda Galaxy. But for just a minute, I want to show you how to use a free app called Stellarium to get the coordinates for any object in the night sky, plug them into your Dwarf 2, and then use the GoTo functions. That way, any, anything that's in the night sky, if it's up and visible in your night sky, you can image it with your Dwarf 2. So let's go over. Uh, I'm going to show you Stellarium first, how you can, can get the coordinates, and then I'll show you where you enter them into in the Dwarf app. Okay, you can see here I'm on my phone. I'm going to click on Stellarium. Uh, this is the app. Now you can show it. See, it shows the date and uh, uh, or the time already. It picks up the date off of my phone, my GPS location, all of that kind of stuff. If I spin around here, you can see I'm looking to the south. Um, and because it's still daylight out, you can see I'm still showing daylight. But if I click on the app and just hit the time, I can advance this until dark. And you can see right away objects start, start to pop up, and I can actually search for objects. So if I click on it, go over here to the search bar, I'm going to type in double cluster. I know uh, for a fact that's actually available in my night sky, so I'm just using it for example purposes. Okay, so here it is, the double cluster. Now if I click on this, and go ahead and open this, I can center it up, and then open it, and you'll see I have the RA and the DEC. You see there where it says O2H22M13. I can go to my app now and enter that in. That first set of numbers, the O2-2213, is the right ascension numbers. The second set of numbers, the plus 57 degrees, 14 uh, 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 minutes and 40 0.5 seconds, that is the dec a declination. I need to copy those down, and then what I can do is I can go over here into my Dwarf 2 uh, app, and instead of going and collecting, so if I go over here, I can go to the auto go to, and of course I've got my catalog of things I can pick out. Tonight I'm going to do Andromeda, but uh, if I wanted to do the double cluster, what I can do is go all the way to the bottom, wait, I'm sorry over here to the right of the catalog just click on manual now i can go in and i can start changing and entering in uh each of those coordinates so i'm going to go uh o2 let me go back here and remember what that was now o2 uh 2213 So I didn't write those down. You really need to write them down. If you don't do that, you're going to, you're going to be doing uh, what I'm doing here, which is a, a kind of a pain. Um, all right. So I can go to manual. So I can go to O2 
and then you could see I go to the next one and I can go to uh, 22 and I can go ahead and keep putting those numbers in. Once I've entered that in, I can press go to and it will um, it will run just like if I choose, choose from the catalog. So that's just a simple way to enter in uh, the dates um, or the uh, uh, RA and declaration uh, coordinates so that you can go ahead and uh, so there. Uh, that's the wrong coordinates, but if I entered them in, you can see three hours, 13 minutes, zero seconds. Then I'd have to go down here, enter in the decl declination, um, hour, and you'll see. Then I can go minutes and then seconds, and then I push those in. And now if I hit confirm, the good dwarf would go over there, okay? I just want to show you very quickly how you can, you can choose objects out of Stellarium and put them in. For our purpose tonight, however, we're going to use um, the uh, Andromeda, and we will go to that in a little bit, but we've got a couple more steps before we're ready to start imaging. Okay. The next thing that we need to do is take some calibration frames. Now, calibration frames in astrophotography help us to clean up our image, to get rid of some of the noise. Generally, when you're shooting, for instance, with your phone camera, the signal is so strong that you don't really, it just, it clouds out all of the noise. But when we're shooting at night, the noise, the camera noise, the thermal noise, other sources of interference come in and can affect the quality of our pictures. They'll put little spots and, and all of kinds of things all over our pictures. So what we want to do to reduce that is to take what's called dark frames. And they're super easy to take. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to turn on your dwarf 2. You can see I've got it turned on. Now you'll notice something. I've got the, the, little, the lights here uh, are turned on. I'm going to show you how to turn those off in just a minute to improve your darks. But then to take dark frames, what you want to do is make sure your camera is turned straight down. You want to take your dwarf 2 and you want to put it in the bag that it came with. Zip the bag nice and tight. Okay. Zip up the bag nice and tight. And then we're going to go over to the um, app and I'll show you what to do in the app to get our dark frames taken. Okay, with the uh, Dwarf 2 inside of my trunk and inside of its carrying case, I, I'm but turned on, I'm going to go ahead and go over to uh, Connection. It's going to take a couple of seconds here for me to get connected to my unit. I'm going to show you how to turn the indicator lights and the power supply lights off here in just a second. On my earlier attempts at shooting and just kind of testing this, uh, this, this camera out, I did not do that. And I didn't get the best dark frames. And so tonight I'm going to do that. I'm going to make sure we do that. We've got to go over here. We've got to connect to the Dwarf 2 to its... Um, Okay, we're connecting up to the uh, Dwarf 2. Okay, now we're ready to go. And we're we'll hit the connection again. Okay, so now we're connected. Now, before I do anything in here, I want to press X. And I want to go out and I want to go to my settings. Um, let me just to show you that. This little... Uh, octagon pentagon type uh, shape up here with a circle on it that's what you want to hit and go to settings now i want to go down the camera settings and i want to turn the power indicator off okay and uh well let me see this is how it would be normally i'm going to turn both of these off in fact i'm going to open this up real quick just to make sure those two lights went off so i'm opening the boot here you can't see this but i'm going to go ahead and open my trunk up and I'm going to look in the case, and I'm going to make sure those two power lights are, those two lights are off. They are. Okay. Zip the bag back up. Now I'm going to close the boot. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over here to photo, back to the beginning here. Hit photo. I want to, over here on the far 
right hand side of the screen I want to scroll down to where we see Astro Dark now you can see it says that I've already shot 100% of my darks but those were some old ones so I'm going to reshoot these and what I'm going to do to start this, and we're not going to sit here and watch the entire process, but I just simply hit start, restart, and now it will start taking the pictures. Uh, and basically what it's doing is going through each game and exposure setting, and it's taking dark frames, which basically records for us the sensor noise and helps us to reduce out a lot of those hot pixels and just get a le less noisy picture. Uh, generally, when I'm shooting with uh, my other astrophotography equipment, uh, say with my Red Cat with the 183, the ZWO 183 on it, I will usually shoot somewhere between 20 to 30 darks. And then there's also some other calibration frames called uh, flats and dark flats that I shoot. But on this, this is what you need to do to get your calibration done. And basically, you it's going to take about 10 minutes or so. Uh, I won't watch the whole thing here, but basically, it's going to shoot those darks. And then it's going to apply those to the frames as we take them of the Andromeda Galaxy a little bit later on. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and uh, stop right now. But you've got the idea. Make sure you shoot these. Don't turn it off until it gets over to the 100%. All right? You want to get all of your dark shot before you start imaging at night. And that's going to make things look a lot better and go smoother. Okay. Uh, we'll go. I'll come back here in just a couple of minutes when it gets a little bit darker and our darks are, are f finished. And we'll go ahead and get calibrated and get shooting. Okay, now that I've got my dark frames uh, taken, I'm going to go ahead and get the Dwarf 2 set up and get ready to image. You can still see it's still daylight outside. It probably looks a little lighter than it actually is uh, on this camera. But uh, here in a, about a half an hour or so, it's going to be dark enough to start imaging. What I want to do right now is get things set up. So I've got my uh, tripod set up. I take the time to level this. Now, I know in the comments section, I've gotten some messages from guys that say it's really not necessary to level it. I find, this is just my opinion, uh, but in uh, not leveling it and leveling it, just kind of playing around, I think the tracking works a little bit better if the tripod is leveled. Now, that's just my opinion. Uh, you, can, you can take that or leave it if you want. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my uh, Dwarf 2. I'm going to set it up here on my tripod and get it snapped in. I'll turn it facing you so you can see the next step that I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and turn the cameras up towards the night sky. And I'm going to then do something. Again, this is an option for you. Um, I like to use a power supply. Now, what I've done is just taken a um, power supply that has a USB-C uh, plug on it. And uh, this came off of an old Dell laptop that I have. And I'm going to use it instead of the battery tonight. And that, the reason for that is that's just a personal uh, decision. And uh, I don't like to have batteries run out right in the middle of an imaging session. And anytime I've ever used batteries, it always becomes a problem. So um, the batteries seem fine with the Dwarf 2. I, I haven't had really any problems with them, but um, I, I don't do that. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I want to get a rough focus on my Dwarf 2. The way I do that a lot of times is just point off to a distant object. There's some trees and a couple of uh, um, radio towers and cell phone towers about a mile or so from me. A lot of times I'll just aim at those and I'll get a rough focus. Tonight the moon is out, so what I'm going to do is go over and just get my rough focus on the moon. While I'm there, I'm going to show you one other thing, the setting that you can turn on that, that will help you to avoid uh, some dew issues. Anytime you're imaging out at night and the temperature is dropping, uh, dew is a problem on the cameras. Uh, on my big 8-inch that you can see behind there, I've got a dew control system on it. Um, but there is a way that you can at least moderately control the do on this. And because that's going to be an issue tonight, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. So next step we're going to do, I'm going to go over to the app. I'll show you how to turn the quasi do heater on and then also get our rough focus.
Okay, you can see now I am in the um, uh, Dwarf 2 app. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, show you how to deal with this, this quasi um, dew heater issue. I'm going to go up here to my uh, little uh, hexagon box or whatever you call that. I don't know how many sides that has, but anyways, this little shape up here. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to go ahead and go to camera settings, and then I'm going to go down through here and look where it says CPU performance mode, I'm going to turn that on. And basically that what, what that is going to do, it's from what I understand, it's going to run the CPU a little bit harder and a little bit faster, generating a little bit more heat. And it's going to keep the sensors and the lenses from fogging up quite as bad. Now, I don't know how well that will work, um, but I've been out a couple nights in a row where do should have been an issue and it really hasn't affected me all that bad. So I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, now I want to go over and I'm going to go back to photo. And what I want to do, because I want to get a rough focus, I'm going to go over here to my wide camera angle, and I'm going to tap on the moon. And by the way, that is a little trick that I learned from one of my viewers. I have a hard time sometimes with this crazy joystick. But if you've, if you've got the, the moon or the sun, if you're trying to image the sun, uh, in your... Um, wide angle camera lens and you've done the calibration of calibrating your little uh, your wide angle and your telephoto lens you can just simply tap on it and boom it goes over when i go over to my telephoto lens there is the moon all right let me go ahead and turn that off it's not perfectly centered but we can go ahead and uh we can work on it here a little bit we'll get it centered up and you can see i am indeed out of focus a little bit so what I'll do is I'll go over here. I'm going to go ahead and, um, well, that looks pretty good, those settings. So let me go to focus. I'm going to click on focus. And then I'm going to go ahead and move one direction. Oh, I picked the right direction, it looks like. I'm actually going to turn the exposure down a little. There we go. Just a little bit more. All right. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. And now I'll just go ahead and play around with it here. I'm not trying to get my final focus. I'm just trying to get pretty close. Let me see. That starts getting a little bit worse. Let me go back the other direction. I'm going to go out. That looks pretty good. Okay. So now we have got our uh, camera set up. I've got the dew heater turned on and I've got a rough focus. And my next step is wait for it to get a little bit darker. I'll calibrate and we'll start imaging. Okay, you can see I'm in the app now. And what I need to do is do my calibration and then get a focus. So I've got my Dwarf 2 kind of pointed towards the north uh, uh, sky. Then I've got uh, the camera turned up probably 40 degrees, maybe 50 degrees, I don't know. Point it upwards, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and press calibrate. It's gonna find my location off my GPS. Then basically it turns to the left and the right, then spins the camera up and down. That way it finds its indexes. Then what it will do is take a series of three calibration frames. You can see it's taking the first one now. And then through that, it will locate itself uh, orient itself to the night sky. And I want to commend Dwarf Labs. This is a very good routine that they have put together. It's quick, it's accurate, and uh, I hope that all the telescope makers uh, copy what you guys have done here because this is a really, really simple way uh, to get uh, aligned. And especially if you're in a, a very light polluted area where you have trouble finding any of the, you know, basic uh, calibration stars we'd use there we go we are done so now the dwarf 2 knows what it's looking for what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and uh, do an autofocus i'm going to go to our catalog i'm going to select vega they've given us two very bright stars uh, sirius and vega it will slew over to vega it will get it lined up in the center of our picture Several people have asked if I've tried this um, 
autofocus routine, and I have. And I've found that as long as you use a very bright star and you have pretty good seeing conditions, um, you know, where, where you've got a nice transparency, the atmosphere is pretty calm, it works well. Now, a couple nights ago, I was out in bad seeing, it didn't work so well. So I'm gonna click feature off. You can see um, Vega is the real bright star there. I'm gonna click on focus, auto. This is another one of these really good routines. I think as they tune this up, it's gonna be even better. Um, I'm not sure if they just use one single star in this routine uh, to uh, find the focus or not. But if they don't, I hope that they will add additional stars in and average them. That will take care of some of that problem with the autofocus in bad seeing. Okay, so now it looks like our autofocus is done. You'll notice the little auto button has turned from green to white, means that it's completed. So we are in focus. We are calibrated. Now we're going to go up to feature. We're going to go ahead and go over. We will find the Andromeda Galaxy. Now, if you were using the manual, you'd go over here and manually enter in, uh, as I showed you a little while ago, and then press confirm. But we're going to just do the Andromeda Galaxy because it'll be very simple tonight. We're going to press, press on confirm. It is looking for the There you go, it's plate solved. And now we are set up. And I'm sorry, my daughter is just pulling in. You can hear her car. I've got some kind of rattling going on in her car. But we are lined up. Now we're ready to set up to image. And I'll be back in just a minute. I'll show you how we do that. Okay, as you can see, I'm in the app. I'm gonna press feature again. I'm gonna click on more. And I'm going to set my, I'm going to move my counter over here. And I'm going to take 200 images. All right. I'm going to press confirm. And then I'm going to come over here to this little hamburger button. And I'm going to switch this to shoot 15 second uh, frames at a gain of 80. And I want to turn my IR cut pass filter off. Okay. Once I have that, I simply press go. Press the big red button and it will start taking our images. And what this will do is it'll take uh, one image after another, and then it'll do what we call stacking them, which is kind of uh, combining each of these together so that we get um, more uh, data, we get a clearer picture, we're gonna reduce a lot of the noise uh, out of the picture, and uh, we're gonna, uh, instead of shooting one very, very long exposure, we're gonna shoot a whole lot of shorter exposures, combine them together, and get a better picture. So you can see we've got our first um, frame taken. It is right now shooting the second one. Once it's done that, it will stack them together. Okay, and you'll see there where the current says two, now stacked says two, okay? And what will this will happen is each time it takes a frame, it will add it to there, and this image will get better and better and better. Now, already I'm pretty impressed with it because you can see clearly we've got Andromeda. You can just see a little bit of the faint dust uh, uh, laying over there. We're centered up pretty well, and what it will do, and it looks like we're in pretty good focus. The other thing I'm impressed about well, with the dwarf, and I'm just going to mention this real quick, is it tracks pretty well. You can see if I if I zoom in here, my stars are fairly round, and that's the test of whether you are are um, tracking well. Okay, so there is four, and we will just keep watch this for another uh, few frames. Then I'll pause it, and I'll come back a little bit later, and I'll show you once we've got uh, maybe, say, 50 frames stacked. We'll take a look at that, and then on up. Okay, so there we've got uh, Kernus uh, 6, we've got 6 stacked, and each time we can see a little bit more detail. It's reducing the noise down a little bit, and that'll happen. Of course, we've taken our darks that will help with that, and then the more data we stack on top of each other, the better the image will get. So I'm just going to go ahead and pause this, and I will be back when we get about 50 of these stacked.
Okay, you can see I'm coming up here on 20 frames. I've taken a total of 19. I uh, got 19 stacked now. You can see the picture has improved. Um, noise is reducing. I'm starting to see a little more detail uh, in around those dust lanes. And uh, that will only improve. And the longer that I, I image on this, uh, the more that will improve. So looking good so far at 20 stacked i'm still impressed the, the stars are nice and round it's tracking well starting to see a little bit of stacking aberration way 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 over there on the right hand side that's to be expected if you're imaging in alt as mode you are going to have um, a little bit of a stacking aberration around the corners due to the rotation of the earth um, that's not a problem we'll crop that out a little bit later but uh, looking good okay we'll come back in a little while Okay, you can see we're at uh, 47 uh, frames taken and 47 stacked. Um, things are still looking pretty good. Each time um, uh, we come back, we can see a little bit more detail. You can see these uh, dust lanes that are starting to show up a little bit around the core of Andromeda. We see the satellite galaxies. Um, again, stars are looking pretty round and tight, and uh, the noise is reducing down very, very nicely. And so overall, I'm pretty happy with uh, where this image is going. Uh, we'll see. Um, again, I'm starting to see we've got the stacking aberrations. Those always drive me nuts. That's why I don't like to shoot in alt as mode. Um, but um, that's okay. We, we, we will figure out how to polar align this. I'll show you how to do that another day. But as you're getting started, that's just one of the things that you, you, you will have to account for a little bit in your picture. But it's not a big problem. It's just a little bit annoying to me. Um, so it's looking pretty good. All right, we'll be back again. I think I'll, I'll come back when we get a hundred stacked. Okay, here we are at a hundred frames stacked, uh, or just went on a hundred frames stacked and things are looking very good. Uh, more and more details showing up. We could go over to feature here. We could take this and, uh, maybe I'm not very good at this yet, but, uh, maybe adjusting the curves a little bit. We could kind of put a little bit of a. Yeah, well, that kind of messed it up. Let me hit reset. I'm trying to just put a little bit of uh, an S curve into this. Oh, that messed it up completely, didn't it? Just kind of drop the. Well, my fingers are too fat to and too cold. There we go. Darkened it just a little bit there. Darkened that background up. And you can see how, we'll sh I'll show you how to play with that curves a little bit later on. Okay, you can see I've just finished the imaging run. Uh, this is uh, 200 stacked uh, frames, 15 second frames, shot at 80 second, or 80 again. Uh, of the Andromeda galaxy. Now, the last thing I want to do, I will do a little bit of editing this and I'll show that to you. But I want to go over here to my album. And what I want to do is I want to take this picture here, all right, and I want to go ahead and download it so that it will be on my local, uh, on my phone. Uh, right now, it's simply in the Dwarf 2, but by going ahead and clicking on it and then uh, clicking on download, it will go ahead and download it, and that will make it available as we'll see. Let me go back here to my album. If I go to local, you can see, there we go. It is ready for me to do some processing in. So let's talk a little bit about processing in the next segment. Okay, I'm in the Dwarf Labs app, and what I want to do is um, I've already put this on uh, the picture over on my local directory. But what I want to do now is download it on into or export it over to my uh, Google Photos so that I can open it up in Lightroom and do some work on it. So the way I do that is just go over here, hold my finger down on it to, on the picture to select. You'll see that that little uh, green check mark has popped up. Go down to the bottom of the page. You'll see an export box. Press it. Hit confirm. That's going to move this image over to our Google Photos. Now we can go to Lightroom 
and we can go ahead and open this picture up in Lightroom. And because I've already done a little work on this, um, it's showing you um, uh, that kind of finished product. But the first thing I want to do is when I go down there, I want to go over to the Rotate and Crop um, tool, which is right here. Once I click on that, I can just kind of use my fingers to expand, contract, slide the image around, move it until I get a picture that I want, and I get all of those stacking aberrations pulled out. Once I get that done, I go ahead and press on the check mark. Now I'm going to go over here to the edit button, and what I want to do here is on light, I want to kind of adjust the contrast just a little bit. So you can see I'm pulling the contrast up. Maybe pull the exposure down just a hair. See how that looks? Okay, that looks pretty good. I can move the shadows around. You can move any of these. If you move the highlights that way down, uh, you can move the highlights way up. Uh, of course, the key on the Andromeda Galaxy is not blowing out that central, central bulge. But, okay, so I like that. That looks pretty good. Uh, then I can go in here. I can mess with the color, uh, the temperature, uh, saturation. I can pull up the saturation a little bit, maybe coax a little more color out of there. Maybe try to get rid of a little bit of that. That green, that might have made it a little bit too, okay, that's okay, I like that. Um, and like I say, you can go around and mess around in all of these different um, uh, um, buttons. You have different effects. Uh, I don't want that. I want to go over here to effects. I can uh, dehaze it a little bit. And pull up the clarity. Um Anyways, you can mess around inside of here till you get an image that you want. Once you have that, then you can go ahead and save a copy to the device. Once you've saved your copy, boom, there it is. There is our final image of Andromeda. In fact, let me, if I go over here to my photos. I want to save a car. If I want to share that, I can take that over. Loading photo. Now I can send it out to Facebook. I can send it out, put it on my photos if I want to. And uh, whatever I want to do, I can go ahead, put that on my photos. There it is. Here is the original version. There is the completed version. And that's all there is to it. All right, I hope you enjoyed it. The Dwarf 2 is an amazing little telescope. It's a great starter package. If you're getting involved in astrophotography for the first time, this is a great choice for getting started. It's easy to use. It's very simple. Um, and yet it's got some power in it. We showed a very basic way of taking an image tonight, but you could save those FITS files and do a lot more processing. We'll do that in future tutorials. I'll show you how to get more more and more out of your Dwarf 2 as we go along. But this is a good start. By the way, if you haven't ordered your own Dwarf 2, I would love if you would take advantage of my affiliate link, which is down below uh, in the description section. Click on it. You can order your own Dwarf 2, and at the same time, you'll help out my channel. Thanks for tuning in today.